Absolutely. Hi, my name is Kevin Janaway, and I'm interviewing uh, famous superstar comedian Mark Anthony Ramirez, who also produces Funnier Than Fiction and other shows throughout um, Manhattan and Brooklyn and Queens, etc. All over the world. All over the world. All over the world. And Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico? What? <laughs> I haven't been to Puerto Rico in eons. <laughs> they don't even let me on that island. I have family there. I'm sorry. Yeah. You should never go there. I love Puerto Rico. Just kidding, J Lo and Mark Anthony. And I love Ricky Martin though. I got to go see him in. Uh, I saw Ricky, Ricky Martin in Evita. Oh really? Oh my was God! Yeah. Oh, he was great. Oh wow. He was great. I was, I was. I was. I went with a friend, and she was like, "Oh my God, look at Ricky's ass. It's amazing." She was like, "I think you have an ass like that. Is that the Puerto Rican ass?" I was like, "I don't know. Can't see over my back. What do you ask? Like, it just made me uncomfortable." But Ricky does have a cute butt for so, a dude. Whatever. Wait, so was he playing a heterosexual in it? or? Was uh, he, he played Che Guevara. Che Guevara? Oh, really? Oh, yeah, Vita's amazing. They, and they actually had an Argentinian woman as a Vita. She was great. Yeah, because she wasn't redhead. famous. No. And I was she's, like, well, she's famous down there in, in Argentina, but she's a beautiful was, little redhead. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's good that they're having somebody on Broadway who's not yeah. like Charles in charge or right. some like dumb shit, you know? This is great. I'm being interviewed about comedy, and we're like, oh my God, so a Vita. No. People think it's a gay show. We're talking about Broadway plays. Oh my God. I love and a good like, musical. It was so funny. I was doing laundry this morning and I broke out into a song and dance in the laundromat and this little Mexican lady was just like, oh my goodness, what's wrong with him? You know, like, and I was just sitting there folding my, 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 my stuff and then I started dancing to the thong song because I found some nasty ass thong in, my, in, the, in the washer. Oh, you know it was his. Wasn't. I wish. If I could, I would look, I can't. It's because it's too stringy and I got stuff in the front and then it's plow and then, then I'm making friends that I don't want to make. You know, one time I was walking through the subway and there was this like ghetto black chick she had on her headphones and she was all quiet and then I walked Stop. by and she goes, do that. she goes, thong, 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 thong. You should <laughs> she never was say that. With that stuff. Ghetto black people. I got black people in my family. I got Spanish you people do? in my family. Yeah, I do. What? What's, what's, what's the story? We're doing I got gay people in my family. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you do. Circle gets the square. So anyway, let's talk about why we were here today. Okay, let's get a little focused. So, yeah. So this is going to have to be so heavily Mark edited. Mark has a really great comedy special um, up and coming. On, so. so Yeah, I got a special coming out in, in the new year. Uh, I got lucky a couple of guys. Um, discovered me, actually, in the basement of Karma Lounge. Because I would taken a lot of time off, basically, throughout the last five years. So I really wasn't doing stand-up. Excuse me. <coughs> and um, so I, I started coming back to stand-up. I guess in March, so like a few months after that, a couple, some couple people who produce like a lot of music, they actually produce a lot of music concert films. They saw me and uh, they were like, dude, we really want to produce a special with so, you. So is it new media, viral? So it's going to be, what? actually right now, I can't, I don't want to discuss too much of who, okay. who we're negotiating with because I'm not supposed to. Uh, but there, there is interest actually. I've been around. Uh, I, I celebrated my 18th anniversary doing stand up uh, on the 25th of October, and though I have a baby face, it's been a long, hard journey, but I love it. And um, so yeah, I'm excited because it, it, it's it's been an, it's been a great challenge to write all this stuff that I've been wanting to write about for a long time, and really put a great special together for the people, for everybody, you know, and for my kids' college fund. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, and his daughter like got into all these Ivy League schools. And my stuff. son. Oh, your son. He's pretty enough to be a girl, but no, he's. Oh, no. Uh, so, I don't even want to get into him. He's so annoying. He's so, he's he's great. So oh, he my kids are great. Scholarships. And yeah, he's got he's got he's got a bunch of schools interested in him. He's got a bunch of Ivy League colleges, and I'm um, really proud. That's my baby. So and, okay, you know, it's good. So are any of your kids or your parents or your family into comedy or is it? No, no, my parents hated it. I was on television and they hated it. My dad called me up at 1 o'clock in the morning one time when they re-aired something I did that was on Comedy Central. And my dad was like, you know, sanitation is hiring. You know, you should get a career. So he's probably jealous. Oh, no, no. My dad was, you know, he just, they, they, my parents grew up in that old school mentality. Even before my mom died, she was like, you know, you should try to get a bus driver's job. They make good money. And I was like, Mom, I, I love what I do. You know, it's like. That's probably because they saw your baby mamas. No, no. There's not, there's only, well, look, I was married for a long time. I had three kids with my ex-wife. And then. You know, I, 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 I've been, I have a daughter with someone who's a, who's a great person, who's really amazing, and I adore her. And, you know, I'm going to lock her down and marry her one of these days. I don't really have a choice. Because wow. I, I just, you know what it is, I don't believe in having kids out of wedlock. I never did. Oh, wow. I never thought about that. And see, now that's very normal. People yeah, I know. It's weird. It's, it's normal. Yeah. But it, it's like, you know what it is, too? Yeah. I, it's either that or I'm just going to kidnap my daughter and shove her down a ravine and then take her. 
and then the razor and then be like, oh my god, oh, my baby's But like, I don't, I don't mean that for the whole like morality factor, but I mean like, you know, like people aren't legally prepared to have kids if you're not married and you're not like organizing where the money come from. Money well, comes from. you know what I think it's, I think it's more that people aren't financially. Yeah. I don't think people get it. Like, I think people just... A lot of people are just like, oh my god, I just want to have a baby. We're a couple. We're going to have a baby. You and I, Kevin, we're just going to do this baby thing yeah. together. It's going to be great. And then the baby is born, and you're like, oh my god, what the... All these bills. But kids are expensive. It's really expensive, you know. And, you know, we do our best. You know, parents, it's hard. Yeah, but speaking of kids and gay and Ricky Martin, but did you notice how, like, he has twins, right, that he had with somebody? And, like, his kids were on TV, and they're, like, boys, and they're, like, what three four years old and they had like a long hair that wasn't cleaned right and i'm thinking people are going to watch this and think gay parents don't know how to get their kids hair cut or you know, something you, you know because like you know, it was like it was really like he wasn't taking care you know of what's really kid. funny about this whole statement is that you notice his kid's hair like yeah. his hair oh my god people are just gonna hate gays because of, imagine well then again we live in a, in a country where people just do that they're like can you believe those kids they're filthy Gay people shouldn't have kids because they leave them dirty. You know how many dirty kids I see of like regular parent, like just normal That's couple true. parents. I mean, if you're gonna pick on that, I mean, don't let have gay people. If you're not gonna have gay people having kids, pick a good reason. Like they overfeed them chocolates. Like I don't know. But then Mrs. Obama. No, but he should set the example because he has all that money. Oh, who cares? He was on Broadway. It doesn't matter. Who cares? You really actually? He's got more money because he's. He's people don't realize he's he's an international superstar. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing like with a lot of people that, you know, they don't seem that famous here in America, but they're huge. Right. Or like you can make a movie or you can do a comedy special that makes 20 zillion dollars all over South America. Or in Europe. All, all Spanish or wherever, countries. Right. And it make two dollars in America. No, nah, it would never, it would never happen like to me in Spanish. Like that chick Selena who died. Yeah. Right? They said that she sold more records than Elvis. And I was like, we just heard that one song by her. Yeah. Like in America, but she was like famous for like a long time all through. Places where they habla espanol. Yeah. Just I, kidding. I, that would never happen to me. I know. They'd be, I'm just such a horrible... I'm, you know, my, fam, my family history is mixed Latino. So I got a lot of like white, black, you know, Asian, you know, Middle Eastern, just everything. Everything under the sun, you know, like That's Irish, really Scottish. That's really hot, though. That's really hot ancestry. I'm just saying that for the record on camera. Yeah. It, it, was, it, looked, it looked hotter 20 years ago. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, but it's just... Um, it, we're all mixed, you know what I mean? We're all, I, I, I guess because I'm, I'm lucky to have that, like a, a mixed ancestry, it, I don't really care about race. And I date women of every... Of right, family. of course. It allows me to get away with a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm in some family, like I, I dated this one girl, and her family was like, I overheard her mom say, oh my God, he's like safe black. Wait, what does that mean? I, I had no idea, but I thought it was kind of adorable that she whispered it, even he's though she was only black. like four feet from me. He's safe black. I was like, man, yeah. and then her... And her dad was just like, no, he's one of those Latinos who thinks he's educated. And it was just like, okay, can I just bone your daughter? Like, I don't care about your opinions. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, so I want to ask a couple questions. Ask a bunch of questions. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, what's, what's your favorite show? What if you, you have one right now? Television show? Yeah, or oh, Netflix, whatever you want. I'm the worst. Or of all Downton time. Abbey. Downton Abbey, yeah, that got renewed for like a sixth season. Yeah. And I like that show because those actors, none of them were famous. Right. I mean, for some of them. Patty Smith and some of the other ones. Right. None of them were famous before that show. They were all like working, really good at what they did, theater actors, and then now they got famous from that right. show. I mean, you know what it is? It's like I really don't get to watch a lot of TV because I'm out at night doing stand-up. I know. Um, it's, it, but I mean, I, I, I try to watch like Downton Abbey. You know what it is? I'm a big nerd, so I'm always like History Channel or Discovery Channel. You know, and even the crap on History Channel that I like is like it's good you know, though, like Porn Stars and you know, like it's I'm like a history buff, so I, I like whatever comes out. It's like the Civil War, World War Two, like that, like or when they have their all all Hitler all the time Hitler weekend. You know, it's, it's just like whenever like World War Two stuff comes up or Vietnam War, or just anything. I don't know. I sound like a warmonger. And but like I'm not. the Ken Burns documentaries, like like I just yeah, I like documentaries. I like. I mean, my favorite movie to watch on Netflix is Rubber. Guys, if you want to laugh at a movie that makes no sense, watch Rubber. I never heard of Rubber. Yeah, it's a movie about a uh, condoms. Uh, is it about condoms? No, it's not about condoms. <laughs> it's a, it's about a tire, a car, a wheel, that okay. gains a uh, sentient, like it gains intellect. And just comes to life, and just goes around killing people. 
And so is it, is it a cartoon? Or is no, it it's just people? a real It's a real movie with real people. It's hilarious. So is it supposed to be scary and it's so bad? <laughs> it's kind of like a horror. I don't know what like I... It's like, like a horror. It's just... Dead. You have to just see it. It's just simply called Rubber. You should watch it. I think I'll have to watch that. But yeah, they did take the Downton Abbey off Netflix. I was watching that at first and then... I like but, anything British. Okay, was there any certain comedians that you watched that you wanted to, made you want to become in comedy? Uh, you know what, honestly, it, everybody says the same standard answers. It's like, it's always like Pryor and Hicks and, and Carlin and, you know, those guys. Rick Overton was a guy that I really liked because he was so brainy. Um, I mean, now, like, the comics that I really appreciate, like Colin Quinn and Eddie Izzard, guys like that. I mean, it, smart, but, you know, funny and different. But see, that's good that you mentioned Bill Hicks, because when he died, he, he's a guy who died of cancer several years ago, and YouTube was not around when he was alive, so there's really limited record of him. But if he had been alive now, he would have been more famous. Like, oh. he, got, he got David Letterman, and then David Letterman didn't show what he, Bill Hicks performed, because performance it was too controversial. Right to show on David Letterman, and now comedians all Well, when they, it, when they finally did air it, what was great is that it was still relevant today. It was still, it's it's so weird, like Bill died, what, I think, like, 94? But he And all smoked, the same stuff that was going on then is going on now. He, he must have had some other kind of pancreatic cancer, too, because he died at, like, age 30-something, and he smoked, but, like, you have to smoke a lot to die of pancreatic cancer at, like, age 30-something. You, you haven't spent a lot of time around comics, so. Oh, no, yes, I have. Okay, and regarding um, the sadness and um, of comedy, the dark side, whatever, um... What do you think about the death of Robin Williams and Joan Rivers? Rob, or were they even people? Got to meet Robin and talk to him. He was really great, very friendly, really amazing, very supportive of comics. Very heartbreaking because you know, I mean, you, you're talking about somebody who's been performing almost forty years. You know, you're and, and two of them, both of them, performing over forty years. And you know, when you've been performing that long and you've been famous that long, you become a part of like, you know, uh, American culture. You become everybody knows you, so it almost like you're like family. So, so how, how it's, did you meet him? Uh, I met him at uh, Stand Up New York. Uh, I was over there uh, just, <clears throat> just actually hanging out after doing a show downtown, and uh, I was introduced to him uh, by Rick Overton, and it was a lot of pressure, because like, Rick's, Rick's one of the sweetest guys in the world, and he's like, it's my friend Mark A. Very funny comedian. He's hilarious. He's hilarious. And then, like, you know, you, you get, him, you get it, like, introduced to, like, one of the funniest human beings that's ever lived, and somebody's like, he's hilarious. And I'm just like, and I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm all right. You know what I mean? It's just like, but it was great. And he was, and he was great. And he, and he was really funny and really sweet. And um, it was it was a really great, a nice moment. You said this was in the '90s when you no, met him. No, this was recent. This was uh, like a year and a half ago. Because I don't know. I saw Bill Maher on Charlie Rose, and he was talking about how I don't know if you saw this, how um, that people need that Robin Williams at the time that he died, he was not late for work. He never missed any work, and he didn't show signs of someone who would kill themselves and that they need to look at the medications that some of these people are on because some of the side effects are that you want to kill yourself. Well, you ever yeah. seen any of the commercials for like, yeah, uh, yeah. like it's like, like me trying to quit smoking is hard because I, like you ever seen those commercials for Chantix? It's like, you may have bad dreams. You may have dreams. You may have urges to die. You may have a lot of urges to kill yourself. You're probably just going to want to kill yourself. And I'm just like, really? That's how I feel when I don't smoke anyway. Why the fuck do I need these pills? You know what I mean? So yeah, but my like... friend, my friend, he got on Chantix. He was my only New York friend in Tennessee. He was like one of the first people on that. He was like, yo, man, I'm from Queens, whatever. You talk like this. And he called people a herb. We didn't know what that was. Anyway, he got on Chantix and he said it made him have sex dreams real bad. And his wife got pregnant during that time. And so he has a Chantix baby. So, <laughs> so that just means, yeah, but you know what that could mean? That is, yeah. he has a suicidal baby. Maybe, like maybe, yeah. maybe it didn't affect him, but his baby's going to be like three and trying to hop out of a window, you know, trying to drink Windex, you know, you don't know. Trying to kill other kindergartners. <laughs> yeah, go psycho, so I just, you know, and then, whatever. Okay, so should we do one more? Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll do one more question. This is a good question as he came up with. If you were on a, fl a fly on the wall of a famous person's house, whose uh, wall would you be on? Oh, God, I'm, I'm going to come off like such a dork. Because it's not like a person that's famous and alive now. It's like someone that's famous from like ancient or older times. Yeah. I want to be a fly on the walls of like Voltaire's house. Oh, wow. That's really intelligent. That's a good answer. 
I know, shocking because of his face. No, you're and, intelligent, uh, whatever. No, that's all right. No, that. you're just being a little racist. No, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's all right. You're racism. Um, oh, no. No, I'm just kidding. No, honestly, it would Put be... It, 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 would, <laughs> <laughs> it would be... It would be Voltaire. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a huge... I'm just a huge fan of his writing and his works. Well, you know what it is? If you ever get a chance to read uh, Voltaire's uh, Dictionary of Philosophy, mm. like, he just... It's, it's basically the, the funniest book ever written because all, all, it basic, all, it's basic, all he basically does is really he's an asshole voltaire is one of the greatest philosophical assholes in the world but he always he because of the times he lived in he had to write in such a way where he just pointed a finger the pointed finger of responsibility for his thoughts at everybody else you know he he was he said some pretty rough things about jewish people but he 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 was like well this is all according to jewish historian josephus and this is like what you can't do that or and, and like just things that he, he wrote about government or religion he always just had someone else to point the finger to. And he's like, well, that's just according to Bob. You know, and it's like, people are like, that Bob, what an asshole. You know? So he was like a poetic Howard Stern of his generation. Kind of. You know, he, he really, I mean, he, it's, it's it, I mean, humanistically, he, him and guys like John Locke and all those guys, and the founding fathers, and who were mostly deists. Sorry, Christians. Anyway, you know, they just, they, they, they created this great, you know, this great ideology, and then we've shat on it for the last 200 and something years. Just, Taking a big diuretic, you know, pfft, tearing it apart. I just, you know, you know what I discovered today. I was on, the, I was on the train headed here, and I'll, be, you can, we can end this on this. I, I realized something. I, like every, I don't, I just don't trust a religion. Any religions that have hats. That's a good point. All or religions that, that have hats are, 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 are just, they're, they're yeah. responsible for billions of lives in genocide. All religions, any religion that has, I want a hatless religion. That person I'll trust. You can leave your hat on with Mark Anthony Ramirez. <laughs> yeah, right? No, you can't. I don't want your hat. He's wearing a hat. That's all right. I don't, but I'm not, I'm not the leader of a, of a religion. Let's go to Voltaire's house and do a comedy show. Yeah, let's go. Okay, okay. Everybody, my name is Kevin Janaway, and this is Mark Anthony Ramirez. You can find me at www.marslive.com. And you can follow me, Luscious Kevin, on Twitter. Twitter. Really? Luscious? Luscious Kevin. Finger licking good. And I also have a YouTube channel where I do different characters luscious. and stuff like that. And it's Luscious. What, what's your Tinder? I'm not on Tinder. Full of shit. Man, I get laid. I don't gotta go through Tinder to get mm -hmm. laid. I'm Tinder when you look at me. You're Tinder I'm luscious? I'm in your mouth, not in your hands. It's flirting. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks for having me.